Hello, this is Jared from Commit Quality, and in today's video, we're going to go over test hooks. You might be thinking, what are hooks? So typically, hooks are used for setup or teardown of a test or tests. There are four main types of hooks in Playwright Test. You have the before each, the after each, the before all, and after all. So before each and after each are executed before or after each individual test whereas before all and after all are executed once before all or after all of the tests. So let's jump into some uh, examples and we start writing the code and hopefully it'll start making a bit more sense if that introduction didn't. So I'm just gonna write a simple test a second. So let's say test, let's just name it one. And we want to say synchronous. Um, I don't think we're gonna use the page um, fixture in this, but we'll, we'll bring it in anyway. Uh, just in case, and we'll say, right. so we've got our basic test here, and all I'm going to do is, I'm going to set a variable at the top, so let, um, let's just call it x, and that will be a number, and this is what we'll use for our test, and I'm going to add a simple assertion, say, expect x, and we'll say to be the number two or one. Maybe I'll do one for this one, we'll do two for another. I'm just going to copy this code and I'm going to paste it down below. So we have two tests. We have test one and test two, where we're expecting x to be the value of one in this one and x to be the value of two in this test. Now, before we actually uh, start using these assertions, I'm just going to comment them out because we want them a little bit later now. I want to go over hooks just in the general file before we start scoping them. We just talked about the before each hook. Let's say test.before each, so you can see there that it comes up. And we'll say do, 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 set that. And we can start writing some of our code in here. And I want to say console.log hello before each test. And I'm going to copy this and I'm going to change the before each to a before all. Just to show you first how it all works. Hello before all tests. So let's break this down. What I've done is I have two tests in the test file. Nothing is scoped or grouped together. And then we also have two hooks. One which is a before each and one which is a before all. So going off the example I give in the introduction, what we should see is console.log when I execute the test should say hello before each test for this one and hello before each test for this one but we should only see one log for hello before all tests because we're using the before all which will apply to all of the tests in this test file so let's say npx playwright test and as always I've scoped my config to just use one uh, project so it's only going to run the two tests using that one project. So we'll wait for that to go through. Of course, we're not asserting anything, so nothing's gonna fail at the moment. And what you've got here is hello before all tests, hello before each test, and then this test is going to execute, and we've got hello before each test for this. And same again, it'd be the same principle if we said hello, or sorry, after, oh, we don't want all, we want after each. So hello after each test and we'll say after all tests and hello after all tests. So same principle, but instead of being at the start, it's going to be at the end. And the last thing we'll see is hello after all tests because that's the last thing it's going to execute because it's going to say, right, after this test, print out this, after this test, print out this again. And then once they both finished, we're going to say after all of them, print out hello after all tests. So let's say npx playwright test and we should see that example. Great, so that's exactly what we just said is finished, hello after each, hello after each again, and then we've got hello after all. That's the example of uh, using hooks in the test file and applying to all tests in the file, completely fine. However, we can also scope them inside our describe blocks. So let's say we have these two tests. So we have test one, um, and we'll say, just name it something else. And we've got test two. Uh, we'll paste that and say two v two. 
do exactly the same thing. So in the most basic example, we want to say expect x to be 2 for these two tests, and we want to expect x to be 1 for these two tests. Now you might be thinking, well, I could just say x equals 1 inside here, and I could rinse and repeat it in here as well, x equals 1, and then do the same for down below, but x would equal 2. But what you've got here is your code's not dry. You're repeating yourself. And this is where hooks can come in. Now, if we applied it to the top level, say in a before each or before all, what we're going to find is that you set x before each of them, but you're going to fail on one of them because x is either going to be 1 or 2. And this is where we can start scoping our hooks and we can remove this kind of repeatable code from inside the test and move it into a hook. So what I want to do, we can keep these here because you can see how they can work with scopes as well. And I just want to say test.describe and do, 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 let's do that. And we'll have it as anonymous because it doesn't actually matter. Put that in there. And let's move these two tests inside that grouping here. And we'll copy and paste this because I'm going to be lazy on it. Copy that. And we'll copy these two tests inside this grouping. Great. Now, what I want to do is remove the x equals 1, because we don't need that. And I want to add a hook into each of these two describe blocks. Now, if you wanted to, you could actually name these something else as well. You could say group 1. Uh, we can say group two. I wasn't going to do it, but maybe it makes things more readable. So we'll say group two. Great. And now I want to put a hook inside this describe, which will apply to all of the tests inside here. So once again, we'll do test dot, and we can use the before all because it's going to apply to both. And um, we can say do, do, do. Uh, we're going to say x equals 1 in this case. And we can copy that and we can paste it down below into here. And we'll say x equals 2. So what we've done now is we still have these hooks which will apply. So after each of the tests, we now have four tests. You're going to have the hello after each test. And after all of them run, you're going to have this. But then we've nested these hooks here to say before all the tests that only apply to what is it, whatever's in this describe block which in this case is going to be test 1 and test 1 v2. And then we've got for this one, before all tests inside this block, we want to set x to equal 2, which means it'll only apply to test 2 and test 2 v2. So let's kick that off. And we should see exactly what I've just said, and we should have passing tests because we scoped them inside the groupings. There we are, so they all passed, and you've got hello after each test, hello after each test, hello after each, and hello after each. <laughs> and then we've got hello after all tests, so perfect. So that's the way of how you can start kind of scoping your hooks and making things repeatable. So instead of having x equals 2 in these two tests, you've put it in your before all. And you can do the same with teardown as well. So if you had something you wanted to tear down, so a good example could be maybe you're adding a specific item to say like a database, you can set that up in your before each. And then in your teardown, you can say, I want to remove it after that to keep it all nice and clean. Whatever you want to do, there's so many different examples of using hooks. And that's it for hooks in this video. Now, what I want to explain is in my next video, we're going to go over a different approach. So even though using hooks is completely fine and acceptable, uh, Playwright actually mentioned in their documentation that you should use fixtures instead of hooks. And fixtures do have a number of advantages over using the before or after hooks. And uh, these will all be defined in the next video. So keep an eye out for that because that will come in very handy and it'll be a way of refactoring your code into something that is considered better practice. As always, if you do have any questions, please leave a comment below. A subscribe is always appreciated and have a great day.